Hey guys, Peter here. Welcome to another episode of Peter Chat. Today we're going to be talking about how to rent an apartment in New York City the right way. I have a lot of different information for you. Um, over my years in New York City, I've lived in seven different apartments. Gramercy Park, Theater District, Kipps Bay, Yorkville, Harlem, Upper West Side, and Park Slope South. I've moved about every one and a half years. My shortest stay in an apartment was three months, and my longest stay was three years. I'm going to start with some high-level important tips. And then as the video progresses, I'm gonna dig into the weeds, into some minutia and, mis and miscellaneous topics that you may or may not even be thinking about. Let's jump right in. Get a feel for what you should expect for your price range. Go online and look at sites like StreetEasy, Compass, or any other website out there that has New York City apartments listed for rent. Do your research in advance so you know what you should be able to get in your price range. There's no such thing as a great deal. I know this sounds really negative, but that's kind of the reality. If you can get a fair deal for a New York City apartment, that's considered a great deal. Most of the time, I felt like I was slightly ripped off. Know your list of deal breakers. It could be a great apartment, but it's a 20 minute walk to the train station. It could be a great apartment, but it's a fifth floor walk up. I've learned that I have really only two deal breakers. I have to have laundry inside the building and I need to be within five minutes walking distance to a train station. All the other stuff I can be flexible with, but those two things are my deal breakers. Be prepared to move quickly. Maybe COVID has slowed things down a bit, but for good apartments, they will move fast. The moment you visit an apartment and you can see yourself living in it, don't hesitate. This is probably the right apartment for you. Make sure that you have all of your documents prepared in advance. Make sure that you have your guarantor lined up if you need one. Make sure that you know your credit scores, so you're not surprised when they run a credit check on you. Make sure that you have your money, your first month's rent, your security deposit, and maybe your broker's fee as well. Just start looking for an apartment about one month in advance at the most. You'd be surprised how quickly people can find an apartment and then move in. Summertime has the most units available, but it also has the highest rents. So if you're not too picky and you can move in the fall or winter time, you can actually get a pretty good deal on an apartment. Read your lease carefully so you know what you're getting yourself into. Those are the really big important stuff. Next I'm going to get into more details. Some things you may not be thinking about. Do I need a buy side broker? No, I never used a buy side broker when renting in New York. Whenever I found an apartment that I liked on an online listing, I just reached out to the agent that represented the unit and I scheduled a time to see it. Should I get a no fee versus a fee apartment? For some apartments, the landlord pays the broker the fee. That would be a no fee apartment. If the person that's renting has to pay the broker the fee, that would be considered a fee apartment. Now fees usually range anywhere from 8% to 15% of the first year's rent. So it's a lot of money. Usually the gross rent on a fee appointment is much lower than the gross rent for a no fee appointment. I think if you can afford the fee, it opens up more choices. One time, I saw two very similar appointments in a unit. One was a no fee appointment priced at $3,500 per month. The other was a fee appointment priced at $3,175 per month. That's a $275 difference per month. The fee was 15%. No fee appointment was similar in square footage to the fee appointment and both had the same number of rooms, but the fee appointment had a much better layout than the no fee appointment. You stay there for about 15 months, you break even. You stay over 15 months, it's a much better deal to get the fee appointment. When landlords put in rent increases, it's based off of the gross rent. So if you take a 5% increase on 3,500, that's much bigger than a 5% increase on a $3,175. Keep that in mind when you're thinking about no fee versus fee appointment. Effective rent versus gross rent. I hate it when landlords list the net effective rent because it's very misleading and it messes with my search results when I'm looking for appointments. And you might get a great deal for that first year, but after that one month free rent or two month free rent goes away, your rent going forward is very high. I generally try to avoid these. Noise pollution. Pre-war buildings tend to have higher 10-foot ceilings and thicker walls. Noise protection around your unit is actually quite good. Newer buildings tend to have low 8-foot ceilings and thinner walls. If you can visit an apartment outside of work hours, you'll get a better feel for what the noise levels are like in the early evening. Also ask if anyone in the building plays an instrument. I lived in a building once and someone played the horns and it was not fun. 
Pet versus no pet buildings. I know everyone loves their dogs, but consider this. If you live in a pet friendly building and everyone shares the same laundry machines, you're gonna get a lot of dog hair in the machines. And you'll always probably get that one giant dog that smells really badly, stink up the hallways and the elevators, and that dog will stink up the laundry machines and the drying machines. So keep that in mind. If you live in a really big building, they may have machines designated for people that have pets and people that don't have pets. But I lived in a building that was not super large, so all the machines were for, for everyone to use. If you manage to get a nice rent stabilized apartment, congratulations. After the Rent Regulation Act in 2019, these units are that much more valuable because the landlords can't increase the rents that much. Legally, they, they can only increase it at the lesser of 7.5% or the average of the last five years of regulated rent increases. It's a little complicated, so I'm gonna leave you a link in case you wanna learn more and read, read up on it on your own. Basically, whenever I got a renewal offer from my landlord, either for one year or two year, I always took the one year option. For two renewals, my rent only increased 1.5% each year. Here's some miscellaneous stuff that you might not have thought of. Keep a copy of your lease just in case. If you get into a dispute with your landlord, you need to know what you signed. Ideally, try not to get into a fight with your landlord because sometimes when you're looking for a new apartment, you need a recommendation from your prior landlord. The recommendation basically says that you paid your rent on time and that you were not a nuisance to your neighbors. The first thing to do when you move in is to take pictures of everything in the apartment, just to document it. Email it to yourself so you have a proof of time. And if there's any issues, email it to management right away. Even if they don't fix these issues right away, at least there's documented proof that you didn't cause these issues. When you move out, you can take pictures again and compare the pictures when you moved in and when you moved out. That way, if the landlord tries to fight you on giving back your security deposit, you have proof and evidence that you didn't cause the issues that they may blame you for. Washer and dryer combos are useless. I lived in two units with these and they were super inefficient and never worked well. So if you're moving into an apartment thinking that you have the laundry situation taken care of in your unit, don't count on it. If you can, try to get a clause in your contract that allows you to break lease. I know during COVID, especially in 2020, some people were able to negotiate with their landlords and get a break clause in their contract. Be mindful of the size of your furniture when moving. One time I had a couch that did not fit in an elevator, so me and my friends had to carry it up a set of winding stairs about four flights. It was really painful. If you see signs in the building lobby with a sign-up sheet for pest extermination, this building probably has pest problems. I would avoid it. Try to see if you can move in a few days early if the prior tenant left well before the end of the lease. If the landlord is nice, he'll let you move in without charging you. If the landlord is kind of a jerk, he'll probably charge you for that one day or two day early that you move in. Don't lose your mailbox keys. It's a pain in the butt to replace. Make copies of your main keys and leave it somewhere safe in case. But obviously don't put an address on it. Use common sense. When visiting an apartment, open the fridge, open the cabinets, open the closets, just to make sure there's nothing funky going on in there. I lived in a unit once where everything was powered by electricity and I was responsible for paying my own utilities. For a two bedroom apartment, I was paying over $400 a month in utility bills in the winter time. I know this is a lot of information, but it's stuff that I just picked up from living in seven apartments in New York City. Hopefully this helped you, and maybe it made you think about things that you did not think about. If you have any other questions specific to renting in New York City, please leave me a comment. Please like and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys.